Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. I am your host, Matt Gleason. My guest, Steve Rid Ridisovich? No. Oh, no. Radosevich. Radosevich. Oh, God, so close. Not the worst pronunciation. No, that's, but it's, it's the one I hate the most. Rid oh, well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> of course I would nail that one. And Kim Garrison. That's right, you did well. Pronounce that one right. So uh, uh, what's the, what's the w most ridiculous Radosevich pronunciation you've ever heard? Uh, my wife got a Mrs. Radio Service once. As a, <laughs> Radio Service? Wow. As a, as a, as a substitute teacher. Yeah. Okay. So, so you are a, an art duo. Yes. Okay. How long have you been an art duo? Do you could team? What's the proper? Collaborative team. Collaborative team. Yeah. How long have you guys collaborated on art? 2001. 2001 we met years. At, oh. uh, <laughs> yeah. Where, where'd you meet? Uh, we met at Cal State Long Beach as okay. undergrads and just started doing projects together almost immediately. Okay. Um, ritual performance, which wasn't anything either of us uh, ritual had decided performance. to do. But uh, is isn't ritual performance the other name for it is Catholicism, right? <laughs> Help me out that here. That would be a form. Yeah, that's a form of ritual performance, right? I think so. Yeah. So, so, uh, so you're doing ritual performances. Are you making objects? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, I mean, I mean, I think the, the, the classic uh, trope in the art world is you do the performance and then you sell the objects from the performances, relics. I mean, are, are you looking? That. You should. <laughs> write that down. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew Barney. Look up Matthew Barney. Yes. Okay. So what are we looking at here? Oh, that's the iron camera. Yeah, Steve made that. Uh, it's, it's made out of cast iron. It's a working camera. and uh, A film camera, an old school film no, camera. I, I, yeah, film wow. photo camera. Exposed light. Yeah. Oh, strange concept these days, right? Chemical, <laughs> chemical. Yeah. yeah, chemicals, Photography, dark rooms, yeah. the, whole, the whole spiel. Which, you know, that is a ritual in itself, really. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, my God, a time-consuming ritual. Yes. So, so you're working with cast iron. I mean, do you have a foundry at, at your disposal? We were using the foundry in Tucumcari, New Mexico. Tucumcari? How did I remember that? Not your last name. I don't know. But okay. So you were at Tucumcari, New Mexico. Yes. They have a foundry there. Yes. And once a year, they have a big uh, festival almost. Of, uh, it's a cast, <laughs> a cast iron, iron workshop that lasts a week. And oh, okay. um, people come from all over the region. and. Really so it wasn't just like your car broke down. You said, well, let's make some art here while we're, no? That's, That's a scary thought. That's happened to thought. us before, but we won't, we'll, we'll skip that. Uh-oh. We'll <laughs> for another time. Oh, but, dear. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so what, in what year were you, what were you, what year were you in New Mexico? We've, we've been all over the, the southwest region for the entire time we've been working. But I think we built the camera in 2001. 2001. Yeah. Wow. And so we've been using it ever since, uh, the Earth's core is cast iron, and so this camera is something we use out in the wilderness of the Southwest. We go out and look at the processes of the Earth, things like decay, regeneration, uh, and when we find something that has a compelling story that's moving us in some way, then we perform a photo with this camera and we think of it as a meditation on the earth. And it's like the camera is the earth taking notice of itself and recording that. So it's, it's more like it's, you, you have a cousin of the earth's core. Yes. Yeah, yeah, just like you know, a family member in a, in yes. a way. So yeah. the ultimate connection. The camera works very slowly and, um, and there's, there's something obtuse uh, about um, operating the camera. And so uh, it slows us down and then brings us uh, more into a, a place that's um, more in kind of in harmony with the way. Like the if it was digital, it just it would be like, boom, it's too quick. It's too easy. Yeah. You yeah, want this. You want to be know. involved in something that you 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 work hard at it, but it's a bigger reward. It doesn't take snapshots and it, it experiences things in a in a different time frame than we tend to as people. Wow. Okay, well, let's, let's, yeah. let's move on and see what, what have we got here. So uh, this is a photo from Petrified Forest National Park that we took with the iron camera. Petrified Forest with an iron camera. Okay, yeah. okay. I'm seeing, yeah. I'm, I'm, it's all making sense now. Yeah. And because that's also the painted desert, in this case, uh, we also hand-colored 
the images. Uh, so <laughs> Nature we, wasn't, we, you, you, you had to go in and paint it too, right? Yeah. So yeah. we used black and white film, but then we then you drew go in and, and painted okay. over the top. Uh, and then we also have some, a variety of images of Are these uh, addition photographs work. then? Uh, or yeah. monoprints because they're, they're uniquely painted? And then we also build frames that have to do with the subject matter. And okay. when we show this work, we show it as an installation with the camera, the backpacks, all the tools, our walking sticks. Uh, ah. We show, we collect uh, some kind of matter. We collect specimens from the field if something is speaking to us or we do an installation with the plants that are there. Um, it might incorporate sound or video, but the camera is the ritual tool that gets us out there having a relationship with nature uh, in a way that is meaningful and, and speaks to us and slows us down. You know, when you were talking about Photoshop earlier and wondering what art would be like w without it. And when people take photographs now, it's like we're trying to capture things as we take a photograph, and we don't even look at the subject and let it move us. Um, when, soon after we built this camera, I was at Disneyland watching the fireworks show, and there were all these people with video cameras watching the fireworks show through the video camera. And, I, and we, you know, I thought, these people are not watching the fireworks show. They're capturing it. As a moment, and, and then you're gonna and you're gonna fast forward through. Oh, it's just a bunch of fireworks, and you fast forward right. through it anyway, right? You know? So this is kind of the opposite of that. This is is having an experience in the now and learning from the earth. So, so when you do when you do an installation, where 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 have you done these installations? We did one at Petrified Forest National Park. We wow. were artists in residence there. Uh, we've done one in Albuquerque. Uh, New Mexico, one in uh, Las Vegas. So we we tailor it to the site, the installation. It's it's site specific. And the project itself changes depending on um, uh, lots of different circumstances and, and just how we're experiencing things. So we don't really have a set thing we do with the camera, and we and and we have a lot of projects that are like that that are kind of ongoing projects that we return to, but we don't return to them in the same way. Almost like nature, like organic, you know, right. you're there, but then it's, the tree grows, the rock moves. I mean, yeah. so, so um, now scale of one through 10, Grand Canyon is a 10. What's the petrified forest? <laughs> I think it's amazing, but it's a slower read than the Grand Canyon. The uh -huh. Grand Canyon is like the wow factor. Uh, but the petrified forest is a paleontology park. Um, so they have amazing Triassic fossils, they have petrified wood, they have beautiful nature, and they have uh, so ancestral like, Pueblo ruins. They've, they've got it all. Three and a half, four. <laughs> 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 okay, let's move, let's move on. I know you brought more art here. What are we, what are we looking at here? <laughs> what are we looking at here? Oh, those are the Sacred Mountains. That's our Sacred Mountains series. And they're collages, and they're, they're drawings and paintings, and uh, um, of places they're, you've been. Uh, we've been to some of them, oh. but they're from all over the world. And you know, every region that has a mountain has a sacred mountain. Uh, every region has a sacred mountain. What is the sacred mountain it. in in Los Angeles? Uh, Mount Baldy and Saddleback. 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 That's sacred. Sure. Yeah. You bet. Does it have an ancient name? Probably. Probably, yeah, sure okay. It does. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any place where people have lived and there's a mountain, there's a sacred mountain. There is a sacred mountain. It's like it's a human trait. It's not just one group or another. It's, it's like every it's, everybody has angels, every, everybody has sacred mountains. It's every group. Okay. And um but and you did, oh here's a close up of some of the sacred uh, yes. some of your sacred mountains here. Kim and I are sitting yeah. on Are these based on photos or painted you you've painted uh, from photo material here? Yes. And so you know we started researching these mountains uh, all around the world and realized that there's there's not a list, you know, it just became this searching them out. And so uh, when we display them we have a map in the middle so that you can see uh, the distribution of them, and it shows that everywhere there's mountains, 
there. What's the is. most, I would, my bet would be Fuji. What's the most oh. sacred mountain relative to the number of people who's like, yep, that's the sacred mountain. God, yeah. Kailash, Fuji. Yeah, I mean, Mount there, some are huge. Yeah. Some are yeah. just, yeah. Um, you know, some, some mountains people come from every continent to go to. And, pilgrimage. Um, yeah, do pilgrimages. Is, or is Kilimanjaro Kailash. sacred? And it's beautiful because a lot of these, before Westerners came to these mountains, people did not climb them. Oh. Because they're sacred. You leave oh. them, uh, you know, they're the home of the gods. Yeah. It's not okay. just the Greeks that uh, had Mount Olympus that thought of the gods on the mountain. Okay. Often you would, you know, circumambulate them or something. But, but you but would never think to climb it. Moses climbed one. I mean. That was kind of a big deal. Oh yeah, with back. the burning bush and right. came back with stone with tablets. tablets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Noah Noah landed his ark on Mount Ararat, Mount Ararat. right? That's yeah. in Armenia now. There really is an Ararat. There, there may be some wood at the top. We don't know. There could have been a flood. Could have been. Okay. Some bird feathers. What are we looking at here? Oh, these are pho more photos from the Iron Camera of different places we. You've got more to. use out of that cam, man. I, That's I, great. I, you've gotten well, a lot of this. use. No, no, no. We already talked about that. Okay. I do really like the one with the wheel on yeah. it. And that's this, this, a giant uh, flywheel up in Bodie, mm -hmm. California. But um, uh, it's, uh, I just like that one. Why nature? Why nature? Why, I mean, you know. It's not just nature that we're interested in, but we're, we're interested in art as a healing tool. Um, we're interested in the ritual of things. And so it's not just nature, but it's, it's our interaction with nature. So it's not just about mountains, but it's about how humans find sacredness in the land. We, and so it's our connection to it that we're interested. We're as interested in society and uh, our civilization as we are in nature. Um, our last project sort of shows that as well. Is this it? Yes. And what's, what's this? So this is from our recent trip to Texas. We went to a small town in the Texas Panhandle called Clarendon, and we did an art residency at a cattle ranch for two weeks. Really interesting to be in Texas right now. And uh, it's a place of great history and tradition and pride and identity with the past. And uh, while we were there, we heard uh, a story about these crosses all around the town. And so you can see that there, this is a cross that's made out of PVC sewer pipe. And there's about 40 of them around the town of Clarendon. Uh, the story that we heard was that uh, a, a guy who had been diagnosed with cancer, who wasn't the nicest person in the town, decided to make his peace uh, with his religion by goading people and kind of a little bit bullying bullying them. people uh, to erect these crosses in the public spaces around the town and to then, ensure mis being Mr. Popularity yeah. right yeah. well hopefully it's popular as he goes on to his maker yes uh, he also put up a lot of billboards with fire and brimstone end of the world messages around ah. the town Goes great in Texas. So uh, this happened a couple years ago. By the time we got there, there were a lot of people who really wished those crosses were not there because now it was influencing new people who were attracted by the fire and brimstone end of the world oh, yeah, yeah, uh, okay. feeling of oh, the town. Dear. And so uh, this was really interesting to us. Uh, and we were encouraged that perhaps as visitors we might like to partake in uh, the destruction of some of these crosses that were on private property uh, and, and where the owners wished they were gone but they were in a public space you know and us being artists we're transgressors as, as you know oh hey and it's perfect timing to just destroy <laughs> something it, now you've put in this is this called the eye of god or so, the eye yes, yes. God's, That's what, eye. god's eye yes. okay okay and it's it's like a summer camp. I remember doing right, these with sure. popsicle sticks in summer yeah, camps. Sure. So there's a bit of humor here, yes. and yet there's also this mysticism. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. and for the townspeople, you know, the, uh, there was not an option for us to go into a conservative 
Christian Texas town and take their crosses down. But what they were saying was, we have a problem with this symbolism. It's not working for us. It's not working for the Christians in the town. And so we came up with something that was still uh, Christian related with the God's eye, but humorous uh, and a little bit universal. And so we transformed. You've translated yeah. nature. You've, trans you've transformed one meaning and yet kept a spiritual layer there too. Yeah, and well, it's watching over the town, so. We are out of time. I want to, I want to talk more about this. I, I want to have you guys back on, on the show, but thanks for being my guest on Modern thanks Art Blitz. Thank you. We'll be back right after this.